Today we are assembling Contec Type 2 bin wall. Before we start, here are some other comments about these particular bins. In this case, it is Design B, which has a depth front to back dimension of 7.7 feet. The height is 5 foot 8 inches and has four front stringers. Stringers have a nominal height of 16 inches. The height of a Type 2 bin wall is a function of the number of front stringers plus 4 inches. So, in this case, 4 times 16 inches plus a constant 4 inch equals 68 inches or 5 foot 8 inches. Today, we are partially assembling what we call a freestanding bin wall. Freestanding bin wall is often used for revetments and blast protection. Freestanding walls are usually of symmetric height, front, back, and external transverse sections, and always stand vertically. This is not the norm for bin walls being used for earth retention, which have less stringers in the back wall and less spacers in the transverse sections, with respect to the number of stringers in the front wall. Also, bin walls for earth retention are quite often installed on a 1 to 6 batter. Some terminology. Panel section. These are the front and back of the bin wall. It is generally the stringers. Unless specifically customized, the wall sections are 10 feet long. Transverse sections. This is generally the spacers and their connection to the vertical connectors. This is what holds the front and back panel sections of the wall together. The length of the spacers is based on the particular design depth. Today we are assembling a design B which has an overall front to back dimension 7.7 .7 feet and a spacer length of 7 feet. In this case, we are going to assemble one bin piece by piece. It will not be completely assembled, but we will demonstrate the assembly of every particular component, if not all of the components. We then will show an optional method of pre-constructing the transverse sections, then setting them in place and attaching the stringers between them. Assemblers have found they can increase productivity by pre-assembling these transverse sections, then bringing them to the area for final assembly by attaching the stringers between the transverse sections. Since these transverse sections will be heavy, this assembly will likely require equipment to lift and transport these assembled sections to the final site location. We laid out corner vertical connectors and vertical connectors approximately where they need to be, 10 feet apart along the wall sections and 7 feet apart along the transverse sections. Corner vertical connectors and vertical connectors serve the same function, except the corner vertical connectors are used only on the external transfer sections, those on the ends of the walls. The corner vertical connector is an L shape and the vertical connector is a T shape. After laying the corner vertical connectors and the vertical connectors in their approximate final location, we attach the grade plate. The grade plate has little structural purpose. It is primarily there to help stand the vertical connectors in place while attaching the stringers and spacers. So, we attach these gray plates and stand the corner vertical connectors and the vertical connectors in their approximate final location. Now that we have the vertical connector gray plate assemblies together, we are connecting the bottom spacer. We do this but later realize we should simultaneously include a spacer closure. Spacer closures are usually only at the front of just the external transverse sections of the wall. They prevent fill from escaping. However, with freestanding bin walls, they are used both at the front and back, but still only on the very ends of the wall. No need for these on internal transverse sections. You will later see where we go back and insert this piece. Another oversight in the attachment of the spacers, we failed to pay attention to the orientation of the spacer. You will notice a double set of holes in each flange of the spacer and further down single holes in each flange. The orientation should be with double hole sets toward the back of the bin. In this case, which is a freestanding wall, there is no front and back so it does not matter which way the holes are oriented, but as you attach more spacers going up, make sure you orient the holes the same way or holes will not line up and you will not be able to bolt your spacers together. Where you see double holes, you only need to use one of the holes to bolt the spacers together. The double holes are only both used when attaching a split vertical connector. Split vertical connectors are used when the design depth is changed on the same run. One more comment regarding spacer attachments. 
All four holes should be used in attaching the spacer to the vertical connector. As we attach the bottom stringer, we have to remove the bolt connecting the grate plate to the vertical connectors, as we need the bolt to go through holes in the stringer, vertical connector, and grade plate. In the case of the external corners, it also is shared by a hole in the spacer closure. It is probably still best to construct the vertical connector grade plate assembly first, but probably better not to torque down the bolt until after all the components have shared the bolt. You should note the stringers we are attaching are colored red on the ends. This is to denote the gauge, which in this case is 16 gauge. Taller bins will have heavier gauge stringers toward the bottom. Depending on the high diameter design requirements, there could be several different gauge stringers on the face of the bin wall. They will be color coded by gauge and will be listed as such on the plans. For this very short, freestanding wall, all stringers are 16 gauge. Spacer gauge is almost always determined by the design type and is almost always the same gauge, bottom to top, so color coding is generally not required for spacers. At this point, we realize we have not attached the spacer closure to this outside corner. We have to remove bolts from spacer and vertical connector to share with this spacer closure. In most cases, the spacer closure will go only in the front and extreme sides of the wall, but for freestanding walls, one is also required in the back corners of the wall. For expedience, we are only showing the attachment at the front. The bolts, nuts, come in a five gallon black pail. In one of those pails, we will also pack the plans. We now attach a spacer completing the bottom row of components of a single bin. As we attach the next spacer up, we make a mistake, only to be noticed much later. We did not orient the holes in the spacer consistent with the one up below. So when we go back to bolt the spacers together, holes will not line up. Please take note of this. Shown in the still photo, the third spacer up has the double holes reversed from this lower two spacers. This is incorrect. All spacers should be installed so the double holes should be toward the rear of the bin. Now a couple of points aside from the assembly of the bins. As we attach the next stringer, let's consider how we should shingle this relative to the stringer below. This is not a structural issue and depends on your particular installation. Shingling the bottom stringer or spacer over the top one prevents fines in the fill from escaping through the overlap. While we spec a certain size fill with a low percentage of fines, often freestanding walls use native materials with high percentage of fines. Shingling this way might be desired. However, if specified fill is being used and bin wall is being installed in colder environments, shingling the top component over the bottom is probably better. If the bottom component is shingled over the top as water runs down the face of the stringer spacer, it may get trapped in between the components and then freeze. This freeze can cause a small separation between the two stringers or spacers and present an unsightly surface. Also, often on freestanding walls with finer fill, it is probably desired to install a fabric in the corners of each individual bin to avoid leakage of fill. Further, on freestanding walls, which most often have no embedment, it is probably a good practice to use fabric where the bottom stringers and external bottom spacer meet the surface, again, to prevent fill from escaping. Back to assembly. Now that we have completed the front stringers to the top of the bin, we are ready to install a stringer stiffener. This is an L-shaped, heavier gauge component. It prevents damage to the top of the thin gauge and a fine edge of the top stringer. To be noted, on most bin walls, this stiffener is only provided for the top of the front bins. However, for freestanding walls, we provide stringer stiffeners for top of the panel section on both sides of the wall. We also provide a similar item better referred to as a spacer stiffener for the top of the extreme sides of the bin wall. Note of best practice, bolt heads should be on the outside of the structure, nuts on the inside.
At this point, we are just attaching more stringers and spacers. Note, there are intermediate holes where stringers and spacers overlap. You need to bolt these components together at all locations except one of the holes of the double hole set on the spacers. While almost all punched holes are used to bolt components together, there is one that will often not be used. See this picture showing the hole pair in the spacers. When bolting spacers together, only one hole of this pair is needed. Both holes are needed only when attaching split vertical connectors, which is a component only used when wall depth design is changing during a wall run. On the external transverse sections, you should use bolt nuts to fill these holes and prevent bin fill from escaping. Note, a spud wrench is very helpful to force holes to line up. 